Hey, how are you? Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Emilio and I work in technology and I absolutely love it. And we are today gonna give you a bit of a comparison, uh, maybe give you some ideas around whether you should be getting yourself a rack-based Synology NAS or a non-rack-based Synology NAS. We're gonna look at the two, maybe the benefits of one or the other. Maybe you have got one and you're maybe looking at switching to the other one. They do have their pros and cons, of course, but we're gonna be showing you this rack-based one along with a non-rack-based one that I've got as well. We're gonna show you the interface to see if there's anything that's different within there. And hopefully I give you some ideas. Remember as always to subscribe, clicking on that button and on the bell so you don't miss out on anything. So straight away, you will notice the difference. Here we have a rack-based Synology NAS on the bottom, and on the top, we've just got a standard Synology NAS, uh, which you could generally would find, say, in a smaller business or even in a home lab or home studio environment. So the unit down the bottom is a rack-based because it fits inside of a rack. So you'd commonly get it set up on rails. You'd actually get rails on the left and on the right of the unit and it slots into place. And you will see that right from here, we have got nine hard drive slots in the rack base unit, while the other Synology NAS has just four. So of course you're gonna be able to store a lot more in a rack based Synology NAS. Now this Synology NAS is a bit of an older one. It's a Synology RS2212 Plus, uh, and it is a 2RU unit, which essentially is a rack unit measurement, and it takes up two RUs inside of a server rack cabinet, uh, while the top unit really does not fit into a rack. Like it'll just have to sit on top of something. It's not designed to put into a rail, into a rack uh, as the bottom unit. Now the bottom unit is something that you would find generally in a enterprise, in a small, medium or large business, and it's a lot more powerful, has a lot more grunt than the top unit. So that's something that you need to consider. But of course, you've got the difference in the size. So you can see straight away the size differences. Of course, the bottom unit is a rack base, so it's longer, it's wider, and it's designed, of course, to slot into a rack, into rails, as we said before. So you're gonna put that sliding right into the cabinet, while the unit above really doesn't have that. It's just got the nice fancy Synology Note logo and nothing else. Now the actual rack itself, you'll see that there's screws on the front. So once you put that inside of the rail, you're gonna screw the front of it. Some Synology NASs or other rack units, you'll be able to screw them on the back as well. While the non-rack unit really cannot be mounted or racked or railed into place at all. Uh, rather, it needs to be sitting on sort of a tray or on a table of some sort. Let's look at the back. Here's a good comparison. Now this particular rack unit, the one down the bottom, you'll see has just one power supply. Now it's very common nowadays for most rack based units, for most enterprise units to have dual power supplies for redundancy. You will see another Synology now shortly that does have two, but the unit on top also has just a single one because it's not generally used or it's not meant for a corporate enterprise space. But they both have dual ethernet ports You'll see that there's two ethernets on the top, two ethernets on the bottom unit, as well as a number of USB ports, as well as an expansion port as well on both units. So you can easily expand the storage unit across these. So you could actually rack this, set it up, and then actually get expansion slots for both of them and actually have a separate unit to actually expand the actual storage capabilities. You've also got the big two fans on that top unit while inside the Synology NAS, there is a lot of additional fans inside of the unit that are not clearly visible right from there. Now to remove a disc or to insert a new disc, you just literally click on that little flap and you take the disc out. Here is the inside. Now this one is a SATA based connection. So you would install the SATA disc you literally just open up the compartment, essentially the enclosure. You then stick in your SATA hard drive into there and then you slot that back inside once it's been screwed in into the NAS itself. Now you will also notice that this is a Western Digital hard drive and it's a standard hard drive that you would find inside of your PC. 
Um, now, commonly what we recommend is inside of a NAS, you have NAS Enterprise grade drives, which is what we'll do in the larger unit. So in our larger unit, you literally also open up the slot. Here comes out the compartment. And then inside there, you'll also see that this particular one is also SATA. Some newer units may also be SAS as well, which is a different sort of connector. But we've also got an enclosure right from there where we actually then go and install the hard drive. Now, what I mentioned before is that generally for enterprise, I would recommend NAS grade hard drives. In this case, this is a Seagate Enterprise NAS hard drive. So they're more specialized for NAS, better performance and better functionality on those disks. You slot it in uh, into our enclosure. You then screw it into place if, you, if the screw holes are there. And then you actually then go and actually put that particular um, disk, the tray, the enclosure with the disk straight in, clicking it into place, connecting those SATA connectors on the hard drive to the SATA connector on the uh, inside of the NAS itself. So it's very uncommon that you would find the bottom rack unit inside of a home, but more likely in a business, whether that be small, medium or large. And of course, you'll get yourself a lot better performance out of the rack base rather than the top unit and a lot more features and a lot more functionality available to you. Now, of course, with all of that, you're obviously going to be paying a lot more money for something that is a rack based Synology NAS, uh, a lot more money potentially in the disks themselves, but also in the features and the functionality, high availability and other features that you'll only find in a rack base and perhaps not in the other one. But in a business, you're looking at rack. In a home, you're generally not looking at rack, you're looking at the unit above it. So here we have another 1RU Synology NAS. This is an RS. 818RP Plus. This is 1RU and only allows you to install four hard drives into it, but can also be expanded if you so choose to. Now, this particular unit that you see right here is actually racked and set up already inside of a rail, as you can see. You've got your LED indicator lights to let you know how the health of those hard drives is going, along with the standard power on and off on that unit. So this model does have its dual powers on the very far left, uh, left and right, running into different power adapters, PDUs in our rack, so that if one fails, the other one can still be operational and you don't lose power to your rack. We've also got a couple of dual ethernets, but unlike the other one that we saw that had just two ports, this one has four ports to allow you to have better redundancy and actually take advantage of having four our Ethernet ports on there, as well as a COM port, couple of USBs, and our expansion. And then there's also a little reset switch, which is also valid and visible across all of the NASs that we looked at. So here's an example of the rail where we've got our actual uh, rack set up. Now, of course, um, you're generally not going to have one of these units sitting on a table. You are going to rack it into a cabinet, as you see right there. Now, all of these Synology NASs that we looked at, generally a newer Synology NAS, of course, comes bundled with a Synology DSM, which is the Disk Station Manager, which is essentially the web-based OS that you can log in to the units and actually manage them, configure them, install software, install WordPress, install DHCP, DNS, all of your other software, manage all of your files, set them up as a SAN, set them up as a NAS, all of that all comes bundled by default. So that interface itself is fairly similar. So logged into the DS920 Plus, this being the four bay or four drive NAS storage manager, pretty standard. You've got your storage pools, your volumes, your overview, and then you've got your control panel where you can go and actually configure things directly on the actual NAS. You can then go and actually download and install information, install apps and things like that from within the package center. So you've got access to all of the app store, uh, essentially the Synology App Store will say, to be able to download apps and install them directly on this four bay Synology NAS. Our rack based Synology NAS, this has been our 10 drive NAS. You've also got your storage pool section right here under the storage manager. You may find that the interface looks slightly different, your control panel, as well as your package center. You notice that this looks slightly different as well. Now, because it is, this particular model is an older model, uh, the actual version of the software could also be different. But all in all, the functionality is there for both of the rack, 
or the non-RAC Synology NASs within the GUI, essentially the operating system for our Synologies. So that's it. Thank you so much for spending the time. Um, hopefully you found this video fun. Hopefully you learned something new. Please do let me know in the comments below. If you did, uh, maybe you learned something and you wanna let me know, give me a thumbs up as well on that video. Would really appreciate it. And as always, please remember to subscribe, clicking on the button and on the bell, and do check out some of my other videos if you wanna learn more things about all things tech.